Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and in this episode I'm continuing Necromunda November and digging into the Imperial cults of House Cawdor. In one of the earlier Necromunda November episodes, I unboxed Dark Uprising, the amazing scenery-filled box set. I'll put a link in the show notes below. But in that was the Palanite Enforcers and Subjugators, the sort of the police force of the Underhive. And they have the backing of the Imperium. They get cool armor, cool weapons. And they also, I think, have the authority to stomp um, in the name of the Emperor. But in this episode, I'm going to look at a different type of Imperial Loyalist. This is the cultist. So these are scavengers, upcyclers. They don't have the official backing of the Imperium, but they are no less loyal than the Palanites. In the world of Necromunda, these Imperial cultists go under the name of House Cawdor. So let's get into this box and just see how deep the crazy goes. Yesterday I looked at the uh, Orlok gang, and Orlok was very much about the pristine weapons, the, what were they called, the, the House of Iron, the industrial superpower of Necromunda. Then here we have Cawdor, and Cawdor always reminds me of Macbeth. At the very beginning, the three witches meet up with him after a battle and tell him he's going to be this and that, and king, and all sorts of things. And, and one of those things is Thane of Cawdor, whatever that means. He then goes off and kills a whole bunch of people, including his best friend and the king. And, you know, I know those are spoilers, but hey, it's been a few hundred years and I think we're past the sort of spoiler risk zone here. Anyway, uh, Cawdor is very much about sort of upcycling and scavenging. And these are imperial cultists. So these are the scarier part of the Imperium, I guess. There's a lot of scary parts in the Imperium, but... Within Necromunda, these would be the ones I'd be like, ooh, I'd be very careful what I say about the Emperor around these folks. I could find myself on fire if I say the wrong thing. But whereas all the weapons yesterday were super clean, the weapons here are not going to be clean. There's going to be a lot of um, crafting on display, as you can see here on the back. And again, you can have it as named characters or you can do your own sort of custom gang. I've also got the cards for this, so I'll have a look at those too. Let's check it out. Uh, black and white guy, and here we've got sort of ways to build them to be exactly, you know, the likes of Coif... Coifnail? Seriously? Blessed Baldric? Moofles? Come on. Cyclist the Rat Finder? Okay. Hauberk? Hoik? I use the word hoik. Um, Cotas, Jornad, Snood Gambison, Tippet, and um, yeah, and you can see the whole, the whole gang of them all collected here. Ah, uh, they look great. Uh, 25 mil Necromunda bases, and we should have a duplicated sprue. We do indeed. And then I have a, just a very quick look. Oh man, look at the strapping and everything. It's just like. Because like sort of lashed together with bits of leather or something. Got these haunting sort of faces. If that's a face, that's pretty gnarly looking. Cool crossbow. And yeah, it looks like they're putting their upcycling skills to good use here. With some fantastic looking weapons. Oh, the sort of the meat hook looking thing on this is neat. I guess that's a little compact sort of stubber looking thing with a metal stock. Very cool, actually. I like those. Okay, uh, have a quick look at the cards. And like the others, we start with our blanks so you can create your own. I'll give you a look at actually what that looks like. And these are these are large enough to sort of that not to be impossible to write on. You definitely be able to get sort of nicely legible details on there. Yeah, these are these are mostly specific. There are a lot more cod or tactics cards here. There have been for any of the other gang specific cards. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, whereas, one, two, three, four, six, yeah, just, just a small handful of any gang cards. So that's interesting. But much more interesting are these miniatures. So let's get them built. All the Imperial propaganda that is all the way through the 40k lore 
is probably setting me up to think that these are good guys. I don't think Imperial cultists are good guys in Necromunda. I don't think there are any good guys in Necromunda. Um, but the minis are certainly very interesting. And so here is um, the first of them. Some interesting haircuts and some really nice weapons. I love the cloth wrapped around the, the barrel of this one. I like these sort of the face masks and stuff that some of them have on. Um, and the clothing is unique to Cawdor. You can definitely tell that with the sort of the look of the face of them, the clothing choices, almost that sort of ecclesiarchal kind of look to it. They do almost look like monk's robes, which is really interesting. I guess showing their loyalty to God Emperor. And here's the next one. Um, with a noose around the neck. I don't really get that aesthetic, but maybe I need to read into the lore a bit more. But certainly the, the clothing and everything is really cool. Strapped on tiny pieces of armor. Yeah, definitely sort of a sort of cultish, religious fervor here and the, the clothing and some of the, the choices that these dudes have made thematically. And some really nice poses as well. I'm loving the, the posture here. I love that he's sort of like bracing against the weight of this thing. And look at this weapon. It's got, I think, a stubber, is this what this is called? And then this sort of a bladed part to it here on this long staff. It's even got an additional little spiky thing at the end, which you probably catch on your leg when you're swinging this around. It's got that nice two-pronged approach to combat, or they're, they're cover, trying to cover their bases here. But uh, really interesting pose. I love the way he's kind of leaning back almost to stabilize the weight of it. And then we have a very unusual weapon. So not this guy here, which is just beautifully orcish in its cobbled together nature. It's this thing in the hand. So it looks like a petrol bomb, like a Molotov cocktail. But it's also got a grenade ring pull and lever. So I don't really know how that works. So a Molotov cocktail works by being full of flammable liquid in a glass container, and then you have a you know a burning rag in the top. It, it smashes against its target, and the burning rag sets all the liquid inside on fire. That's just the way they work. But with this, you would be throwing that at a surface, hoping that it ignites before it gets there. Because otherwise it would just smash and be like liquid everywhere and the, the fuse would go flying off somewhere with the shards of glass. I don't really know how that works. So there's probably a low likelihood this is going to do any damage apart from giving someone a rash from the petrol splashing on them or maybe they get clonked over the head with a bottle. And there's also a bit of precariousness over here with the way he's holding this rifle. He's kind of just got it propped on his thigh. Um, and he's loosely just kind of holding it here. And that'd be a pretty heavy rifle. Now, you should never be trying to hold a rifle like this. It is going to fall. And you're, you're carefully uh, strapped together bayonet with all its spiky goodness. That's just going to get, going to snap or something. But it seems to be a trend within Games Workshop at the minute to stand with your rifle like this. Here are another couple of examples of weapon mishandling by uh, Games Workshop sculptors. This rifle, yeah, that's going to fall on the ground. And I know that Marines are built strong, so it's not like he's would struggle to hold this thing, but he is very loosely holding that rifle. The sheer weight of that drum mag would have this thing rattling across the ground within a few seconds of trying to walk along with a help like this. Nope, just nope. And here's another one, another intercessor marine from the same battle force. And this is another rifle sitting on the, the thigh, just like this. I can only assume that this is the same sculptor who thinks that this is how you hold a rifle. But I suppose the one good thing is you can say that at least the Cawdor isn't trying to reload the rifle while it's propped on his thigh. Because, you know, that would be crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah, that would be crazy. So, 
No. Two words, Games Workshop, nope and nope. Let's not do this anymore, because it makes no sense. Okay, the rant is over, I swear. Let's get back on track with this incredibly dynamic pose. I love this posture. The, the, the straight leg here, the bent leg here, the weapon sort of tucked behind the back. And you see the whole mechanism for firing the rifle. It goes all the way back to this sort of knuckle duster hand grip and like a brake lever a trigger for it. I think that's magic looking seeing that. And this is, I think, meat hook or something here as well. Wow. It's, it's just great to see the firing mechanism because I was wondering about that as well. But that is just great looking. Great character. I mean, don't get me wrong, terrifying, but a great amount of character. And check out this magnificent crossbow with, looks like an RPG round on the end of a stick. And then this thing, you fire the trigger and then boom, and that just goes off shooting across the battlefield or flip flopping through the air in the general direction of your enemy, which I think is more likely what's going to happen. I love the way the fabric is stretched here across the two legs and, um, yeah, really, really nice. This armor as well looks kind of cobbled together. And again, one of these incredible cobbled together hybrid weapons. Uh, and this one again behind the back. But, you know, while it's got all of the same features as the other one, it still looks like a completely different figure, a completely unique figure. And you've got different hooks here as well, front and back. So they're thematically connected. But each miniature stands on its own. Look at this ball and chain. Goodness me. That's the first time I've seen one of those weapons across this range. But this looks so cool. Actually kind of looks like a... Like a chair leg or something that's had the chain attached to it and then the ball. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, nice pistol. Really tiny um, barrels in some of these. They're bit of a challenge to drill through, but well worth persevering with to get the, the full completed figure. And then the final one here is our standard bearer. And I am loving all the tiny details. The, even the, the way the face is sort of bowed. Don't know whether it's out of just exhaustion or out of sort of having a religious moment. But the gun is very cool. Looks like some kind of a flamer weapon. Certainly looks like a tank here rather than any type of magazine. And standing on the skull within sort of a spiky helmet. And there are some beautiful details to pick out in this one. Man, these faces are creepy. But I'm liking the, uh, the standard here. I don't really know what it's trying to say, but there are candles burning on top of it and skulls and shields and spikes lots of spikes and uh, yeah i think this would be really interesting to paint now i do have sort of some issues with how these were designed on the sprue so how they were i guess sliced when they were being laid out on the frames some of the arms and weapons that were being connected onto the bodies actually came in five separate pieces. You know, there were, there were some that were sort of split. Maybe they would go from shoulder to elbow and then it would be elbow to wrist. And then you would have the, the hand on the gun and then the other side, it would be sort of replicated and it just made them feel over engineered. So yeah, just a bit of a strange one there. I also think that the bases they come with are just, maybe they'd be better as 32s because in some cases there was, there was overhang like the likes of this one you've got, you can see sort of where the foot is overhanging here. Um, and I'm right to the edge here. I'm actually overhanging a little bit on this side as well. So that was a bit unusual, having them on 25 mil bases when there's when this clearly could have gone on to a 32 much more comfortably. So the leg span there is just, just pushing the boundaries a little bit. And especially on bases that are already heavily sculpted. So you're already limited in the amount of Con clean contact points you're going to get between the bottom of the foot and the base. When you've got overhang there too, you're you're further limiting the amount of contact. So there's an even greater chance the miniature is just going to come off the base at some point in the future when you're painting it or when you're playing with it. So yeah, just a, just a strange one. If you have spare 32s, I'd probably put these onto 32s unless someone can tell me of a reason why in the rules you can't do that. Um, but yeah, I think they'd be better on 32s. 
but I do think the weapons, the design of the weapons is exquisite. There are nice, there's a nice variety in poses across all these minis. And even though there are very few ways you could vary the builds of these outside of sort of what's in the instruction manual, it doesn't actually matter a lot much because the, the way they've cleverly designed them, if you follow the instruction manual to the letter, you're going to end up with 10 unique minis, which is really cool. And that's something I'm seeing across all of the Necromunda gangs, is they are very cleverly designed. But that wraps it up for the Cawdor gang. For Necromunda, I will be back next week with another two videos. I'm going to be bringing you Cal, Jericho and Scabs, have a look at some bases, the barricades box. I'll have a look at some of the books that are available for Necromunda. And um, yeah, that'll all be coming up this time next week. Until then, thanks so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. And until we meet again, take care and bye bye.